The question is, is there a link between cannabis use and schizophrenia? I think this is a really, really clinically relevant topic for everyone, especially with the legalization of cannabis use. The problem is we are seeing more early use of cannabis uh, in adolescent year also. So I want to focus on that, right? Because schizophrenia onset is in that age. And if you're using cannabis, is there a link between cannabis use and schizophrenia? Let's try to answer this question now. Before we go into that, let's see what the literature has shown us in past. Now, the data shows us that, you know, patients with schizophrenia, uh, they have higher cannabis use compared to general population. And longer or continued cannabis use is associated with worsening of underlying psychotic illness, thereby it causes poor outcome. And to make it worse, individuals like high-risk individuals who are at risk of developing psychosis, they get more increased risk to the cannabis use, right? Now, this is all data. But uh, that does not prove, right? Such reports cannot answer this question, whether cannabis use caused psychosis in the first place. We know that risk is higher for somebody who is at risk if they use cannabis. Patients who have schizophrenia, they're using more cannabis. But it's not the direct correlation, right? So the only way we can answer this question is by looking at these longitudinal studies in general population. And that is what I will talk about now for a few minutes. Let's discuss if there are studies if that have shown some association with this. But before I go into the studies, I just want to briefly mention that there are many studies that exist, but uh, it's very difficult to uh, have a consistency there because Many of them use different diagnostic criteria. Some refers to schizophrenia from DSM-4, whereas some uses uh, the DSM-4 schizophrenia form disorder diagnosis whenever they look at psychotic symptoms. So be very mindful of that. But let's start with the oldest study first. So this study was published in Lancet in 1987. This was actually the first longitudinal study. This was a cohort study of 45,570 Swedish uh, conscripts who were followed up for 15 years. Let's see what did they found. So number one, they found those who smoked cannabis by the age of conscription. They had two times double the risk of developing schizophrenia in the next 15 years. So the you can see the adjusted odd ratio and everything there. And these findings were confirmed in further follow-up after 27 years also. And on top of that, they found a dose-response relationship. Like higher the dose, more risk is there. Like heavy cannabis users had six times more likely than non-users to develop, uh, to receive, I should say receive, not develop, sorry, to subsequently receive a diagnosis of schizophrenia there. So this was first study, right? That raised concern in 1987. So this data is not new. We, we, this is all there. It's all about, you know, looking more into these. And then later on, more studies were published. And I just want to uh, report the finding of this, another study published in 2002. So this was actually um, a findings from the Swedish Army study. So this was a population-based prospective study done in Le Netherlands. So they examined the effects of cannabis use on self-reported psychotic symptoms. So this was self-report, right? And this was uh, done among 4,045 
psychosis-free people, as well as 59 subjects with baseline diagnosis of psychotic disorder. Now, they were assessed first at baseline, then one year later, and then three years later after baseline also. Now, let's see what did they found. So first thing is this, for individuals who used cannabis at baseline, right? Starting, they had three X, three times more likely to manifest psychotic symptoms at a follow-ups. And also they noticed that during these follow-ups, there was a dose response relationship between cannabis exposure and psychosis outcome. You see how this dose response relationship is showing up everywhere. Higher the dose, more the risk. Very important to stay mindful of that. But this study was 3x, right? That's a big number. And also, this is really important. They found that baseline, baseline use of cannabis use. Now, this is really important. I saw this in other studies also. If somebody has used cannabis at baseline versus somebody who has used later on in follow-ups, right? So baseline use of cannabis use was, I think, the most important uh, factor they found. This was the strongest predictor of psychosis outcome than use of cannabis over a follow-up period or use of even other drugs. So uh, risk of psychosis is much stronger for those with an established risk to psychosis, right? Those with history of psychotic disorder or high-risk individual, the risk is definitely higher for those. So really important study with so much learning coming out here. So one thing that stands out is baseline use of cannabis. And we will talk about this, but if somebody starts earlier, their risk is so much higher than somebody who starts later. And I will talk more about this, but please uh, remember this when we move forward. So based on these studies, definitely there is a link between the cannabis use and the risk of schizophrenia so far. Now, next thing I want to talk about is, so there is a risk there, right? There's a link. But is there any other adverse effects that we should be mindful of with the cannabis use? Yes. The first is the impact on education. I mean, for young kids, adolescents, this is, I think, really important, right? If the education is affected, their lifetime trajectory will change drastically. And I think this information is very, um, I should say, scary. When I read it, it's very scary. It should Im increase cautions for parents, for the kids. It's really important. And this is, this is not me saying it. This is what the research is showing us. So number one. On education. Studies have shown that age is really important. For males, if they have used cannabis at less than 18 years of age, and for females, is less than 20 years of age. This will lead to reduction in their expected year of completed education. So I use this diagram, less than 18 for males, and less than 20 for females, the use of cannabis, directly related to their reduced uh, education level. And this was actually a, st a study published in 2009. I I'm putting references below if you want to read more on that. This has shown um, you know, direct correlation there. And as I said, the risk is more for those who initiate early. Now, Earlier cannabis initiation leads to, you know, higher levels, obviously, and longer duration of use. That is the reason why people like kids, adolescents who start early are at more risk right now. And uh, for some reason, there were like two studies, one in, published in 2004 and another uh, in 2007. This found that this magnitude of cannabis effect on this education was greater for females than males. 
I could not find the reason or rationale for that. Uh, but be mindful of that. These age and different for male and female and females at more at risk and somebody who starts early, they are more, more at risk. So education is directly impacted. The second is the impact on the anxiety and affective disorders. Well, we all see that stride still. Anxiety and mood disorders and the cannabis use don't go well. But studies have also shown us the same thing. That, um, you know, in young women, if they are using cannabis daily, there is a five-fold increase in the odd of them reporting depression and anxiety. But if they are using weekly, it's still high. Two-fold increase in the risk of reporting that. And this was a study which showed this in specifically in young women. Again, females are more at risk for some reasons. So be mindful of that. And uh, cannabis use in adolescent predisposes to higher rate of depression and anxiety for that reason. Now, um, as I just said, this uh, adolescent year predisposes them for these uh, two risk factors. Um, but really important thing to know is if a teenager is having depression and anxiety, that does not predict that it's due to that they are using cannabis, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So it is a risk factor, but we need to uh, look at other factors if a teenager is bring, presenting with these symptoms. But this is a modifiable risk factor. So this can be modified, right? Thereby reducing the risk. Um, and this is what I felt was really important here. There is a direct link with the risk of higher risk of having schizophrenia. There is a direct risk on uh, impacting the education level. There is a direct impact on them reporting more anxiety and affective disorders. Yeah, let me know how you feel about this. And um, I will recommend to be more aggressive with evaluating uh, the cannabis use and educating patients and parents so that it's a team approach to reduce the risk for long-term impact. Now, regarding the anxiety and affective disorder, there were actually animal studies done in 2010. This study suggested that in rats, uh, long-term use or exposure to endocannabinoids during the adolescence uh, induces the anxiety-like and depression-like behavior in adulthood. And uh, the likely mechanism they postulated was the impact of cannabis on reducing serotonergic activity and increasing noradrenergic hyperactivity, right? That's how it makes it worse. 